So yeah, here we are looking at a 1980 Talbot Solara or Tolbo Solara, depending on um, where you're from, or as we'll get to in a moment, maybe not even a Talbot, because this very first year of Solara here in um, Europe, it was badged as a Simca, um, which is quite remarkable. And to try and break in the new name, look, Nouvelle Tolbo Solara. Uh, lovely period stickers there. It's a, uh, not its original French number plate, but its last French number plate, for this is a French import. Uh, belongs to my friend Albert, who um, let me drive his fantastic Talbot Tagora last year, and he, he told me that the um, Solara would be a good test vehicle, and I think he's right. So let's start with a bit of history um, about the Talbot. Um, the Alpine, or 1307, I think it was marketed out in France, um, was a joint development between Simca and um, uh, Chrysler in the UK. I'll just let the noisy joggers go past. So Chrysler in the UK was um, um, American owned and uh, it was the Roots Group previously, so um, your Hillman, your um, Humber um, and Sunbeam, companies like that. And um, Talbot was one of the names within that empire, but the Talbot history is very confusing. There was, there's been French companies, a British company, all using the same name, so um, let's not quite dig into that. Um, so yeah, I mean Chrysler was looking to buy its way into Europe, so it purchased the Roots Group it purchased Simca as well, brought the two companies together, and one of the joint developments was the Alpine, which was a hatchback designed by um, Roy Axe, I think, who um, went on to style the Rover 800. Um, this is a facelift version, um, very sort of bland, typical 1980s sort of a look. I mean, there's a hint of um, Morris Ital there almost or Ford Granada Mark II in those headlamps. It's very much of that time. The um, original had a front end which sloped in, but um, they'd already facelifted it by the time the Solara came out in 1980. Um, but when the Alpine was launched in 1975, I think, um, it was car of the year um, that year. And people joke and say, oh, well, it must have been a rubbish year. But um, no, th th these were good cars and we'll get into that as we go for a drive. This is a posh GLS. You can see we've got some nice alloy wheels going on, very plush velour interior, electric front windows as well. So um, yeah, fairly decadent. Uh, although sadly, by this stage, the GLS had lost the headlamp wipers. Um, that's what these uh, little novels are for, is where the headlamp wiper, which is a flat blade, would go up and hit those. Because it was just on a pivot in the middle. So as the arm went up, the wiper would start doing that, hit that, and then swing up and then come down and do the same again at the bottom. Um, so that's what these little nobules are for. Um, sadly redundant on this example. Um, but um, yeah, it's um, Tasmanian green, I believe is the color. Um, like I say, it was purchased in France. Uh, it turned out to be a complete wreck. So it's had a massive rebuild over the years. Although sadly, these cars do have a reputation for rust and it is starting to creep in Again, that's just nature of the beast, I'm afraid. But the Solara was built in response to the fact that saloons were all the rage um, in the early 80s. Uh, something Ford learned to their cost when they released the hatchback only Sierra. Um, it took them a while to get the Sapphire into production as a saloon version. And this is very much the um, Alpine Sapphire, if you like. Um, very neatly grafted back end on. It very much maintains the family look with the Tagora. Got the same enormous lamps as the um, hatchback, um, which does mean a rather high lip. This car has a cunning secret though, because um, it's actually been LPG converted and I love the way it's hidden away behind the number plate. Uh, it's even got a tow bar, um, although as that rather gets in the way of things, it no longer has an underslung spare wheel. But um, I think a very attractive car, not groundbreakingly, shatteringly attractive, but um, yeah, nicely styled, not really a line out of place. It's well proportioned. And um, to be honest, if you looked at it, I don't think you'd ever 
um, know that this car began life as a hatchback. We'll go and have a nose at the interior. Uh, we've got the, a very similar steering wheel to the Dacia, you'll notice. I, I found that quite interesting that the Dacia appeared to have a Talbot steering wheel. But if we jump aboard, lovely, comfortable velour, um, nice, simple um, instrumentation. It's actually done 250,000 kilometers, apparently. Um, we've got a, a manual choke, there's the LPG control. We've got a five speed gearbox from Peugeot. Uh, because, oh yeah, that's quite an important detail, isn't it? Um, I think it was 78 or 79, um, Chrysler decided that having a European operation was a bad idea. So they um, sold um, their European operation to Peugeot for one pound, I think, or one dollar. And um, yeah, it was Peugeot that revived the Talbot brand, um, killing off Simca and um, pretty much every British name. Uh, I love how we have no idea what these switches do. Is that hazard lights? No. Is that one hazard lights? No, one of them must be. There we go. That's worth doing just for the fact that, um, yeah, it sounds marvellous. Um, slightly late um, clarion stereo going on. Um, but like I say, five-speed gearbox quick release on the um, tilting of the seats which is nice we've got a glove box which is probably full of stuff um, this is very much uh, a car he uses regularly uh, electric windows there which almost work we've got um, manually adjusted mirrors uh, so you can adjust them there somehow I don't know how that works and um, yeah there's a door catch nice armrest there we've got little door pockets all quite nice really and very comfortable uh, what one odd detail is the clutch pedal excuse the awful sandals um, you see how it's um, on a bit of a kink uh, I'm pretty sure the UK ones weren't like that but it needs to be like that to clear the um, the wheel arch but um, despite that wheel arch intrusion the pedals are pretty much where you want them to be so that's all good worst sandals in the world ever here is the engine. The engine is all um, Simca's work, which means that, yeah, it does sound a little tappity, but um, we've got um, good old glass, um, um, not screen wash, coolant bottle, a very French thing. We saw that on the Dacia because of its French origins. We've got the jack stored under here as well. It's um, a very used engine bay, I think it's fair to say, but you'll see how the engine's actually canted over uh, to try and help keep the bonnet line low. And I think this is the engine that started as an 1100 or maybe even a thousand cc for the Simca thousand, the rear engine little car. And um, yeah, you used here with an end on Peugeot gearbox to give five speeds because uh, previously they only had four. But um, yeah, satisfactory performance of this vehicle is dependent upon the use of shell lubricants. Yeah, whatever. Let's just have a start up. Um, just so you can assess the noise for yourself. Make sure she's in neutral. Oh, she might need a bit of throttle for a hot start. Oh, might need a lot of throttle. There you go, running on LPG. Which is why the low fuel warning light is on. Apparently it doesn't like running on petrol anymore. Oh, I've just noticed these snazzy aftermarket fog lamps, or maybe they were part of the GLS spec. But, um, yeah, maybe not the most dynamic sounding engine there ever was, but then how dynamic an engine do you actually want in a saloon? But yeah, look at the elegant spindly stalks. I remember that from uh, my childhood when a relative had one of these. Uh, so we've got the indicators stalk there. Uh, it's for the lights, various stuff, and that's your main beam switch. Um, and uh, we'll get to wipers. You need a better angle for wipers. Sorry, I, I forgot to sit in the back, didn't I? Uh, that was very remiss of me, but um, knee alert. Um, yeah, there's plenty of space for the knees and um, nice, comfortable, soft velour, center armrest 
interestingly lever the velour doesn't extend to the other side of that so maybe we'll put that away instead but you know even head restraints here in the back headroom is perhaps a little tight but i don't seem to sink very far into the seat so maybe that's the reason why um, keep fit windows in the back and to be honest i might leave that down because it's getting quite hot before we go anywhere um, i shall first of all start the engine again Yep, that all seems good. No triangle of doom going on. Nice positive action. I mean, it's, it's like having a knitting needle for a column stalk. It's ridiculous, really. And um, here we go. Quite punchy. I have actually driven a 1.6 Alpine before, and um, yeah, that gear lever is a bit long and wobbly. But um, yeah, I, to be honest, I completely fell in love and became absolutely gutted that I've never owned an Alpine or a Solara. Obviously, I like a rear wiper, so I'd be much more inclined towards the Alpine. Um, but um, yeah, what strikes you as soon as you drive these cars is how comfortable the ride is it is um very floaty i can hear bumps but you don't feel anything and even when you go over speed humps it just sort of floats it's almost hydro pneumatic it's um quite amazing really oh which way to go uh there's a wind wheel that way so we'll go that way where's the gear lever there we go I only got the boat in like an, an hour or two ago, so I'm still adjusting, um, but um, nonetheless, here we go, 50 km an hour speed limit, so we'll watch our speed. But yeah, now, now we're on a brick surface, which um, in a modern car would be quite bouncy and uncomfortable, and I can hear the wheels working, but I'm not being um, ruffled about. It's not uncomfortable for me here, and uh, yeah, that's... Quite enjoyable. It's that classic French mix of um, really comfortable ride. Oh, hello, what's that? Some American thing, a Buick, I think. Um, yeah, comfortable ride, but not at the cost of handling. And look at the beautiful windmill. I mean, could you get a much more Dutch scene? That's um, marvellous. Oh, it stopped. I'm going to drive right under the windmill, in fact. Oh, I see, there's a child pushing it. Is that what children are for in the Netherlands. But yeah, I mean, it's a massive long throw on the gear lever. Watch out for cyclists. Big American van there that you can't see. And with a five-speed gearbox, these cars are good cruisers as well. So, um, yeah, really I've got everything. I think they started off with just the 1.4 engine and um, naturally people got a bit fed up with that and wanted a bit more poke and the 1.6 really delivers. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that it is just an overboard version of the original one litre engine. really are very good at tiny rural roads here in the Netherlands. He's not going to give way to me, is he? No, I don't think so. Yeah, the gear shift has such a long throw on it that I keep losing it. I need to get my hand trained up again. Of course, the last left-hand drive car I drove was probably the Dacia and the lever's more there. The lever is a lot better than the Dacia though, because that was a car where finding gears is more luck than judgment. Oh, Mondeo Saloon, quite a rarity. Hideously ugly. Oh, speed hump, will we notice? Not really, it sounds like there might be an anti-roll bar drop link a bit um, tired on the front end, maybe a 
suspension bush. Yeah, just a, a very pleasant car to drive. But quite short-lived the Solara. Um, I don't think they made them past about 86. Um, so yeah, introduced in 80, like I say, this is the very first year of production. That's some pretty extreme traffic calming going on. Oh wow, Volkswagen Polo Mark 1. I think these cars got a bad press for um, the Russ. They were pretty bad. Um, but then everything was bad in the 70s. Vauxhalls were absolutely terrible. Fords weren't exactly, um, oh no, he slagged off a Ford. Uh, brilliant for Roth. Everything rusted. I'm not picking on one car or another. They were all terrible. All that gear change is quite nasty. Let's go this way. Uh, oh yeah, roly poly. But yeah, I mean, I don't know where this obsession with not having body roll comes from because it rolls, but it's fine really. Nothing bad is happening just because there's body roll going on. Um, see Citroen 2CVs for ultimate proof of that. Right, I think we might be finally able to get onto some faster roads. That was a late signal, madam. doing the speed limit of 80 kilometers an hour and um, yeah it's fine the rev counter is not working but it's French it's fine um, apparently we're not charging either but um, again that could just be French electrics for you self-canceling indicators are a bit self-canceling Woo! body rolling A 2CV van. Amazing. Amazing scenes. Something as exciting as seen as an Ami on the um, A14 yesterday. But yeah, I, I really am kicking myself for not getting one of these. Um, really have missed out. This is just such a pleasant car to drive. You could cover miles in this and it'd just be wonderful. I mean, the seats are fantastically comfortable. The ride is so supple. Cars just don't ride like this anymore. And I don't know what the reason is. Is it because of the big wheels and the narrow tires? Or is it just that buyers aren't interested in a decent ride anymore? So everything rides like a race car. comedy boat roll body roll going on I mean it's yeah it is definitely soft but like I say that's not a problem in a family car surely comfort is more important I would play with all the gadgets and gizmos but 
there aren't any really. So I'm just going to enjoy the ride instead. But there you go, that's the um, Talbot Solara for you. Or in this case, a Simca Solara. Ultimate rarity. Here on Hubnut. So there we go, I am Hubnut. That is a Simca Solara. And um, yeah, I enjoyed it a great deal. It's certainly worth coming all the way to the Netherlands just to experience it. Uh, I've been wanting to do a video on an Alpine or Solara for a long time, so I'm very glad to have finally ticked that box. But um, yeah, lovely cars. It's a shame they rusted. It's a shame they haven't gathered more of a following. Uh, I know there's some very passionate um, enthusiasts for these cars in the UK, but um, yeah, I hope more people preserve them. They are wonderful, wonderful cars. And incidentally, I think um, uh, Chrysler Alpine won um, the Festival of the Unexceptional Concourse last year. So good times all round. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. Don't forget you can buy all the Hubnut merch at um, hubnut.org. And I shall see you in a future video. Where will I be and what will I be driving next? It's going to be fun to find out. Farewell. Lovely.